What prompted you to uh, come up with the event in the first place? Well, at the time, I was uh, working uh, an event timing and uh, finish line construction business, basically, and we had clients most of the season throughout the summer and the spring. So we were looking for an event to stretch our uh, stretch our season and use the, uh, use the timing equipment in the end. So we put this event on in the early, very early season. The idea of having a, uh, a tribute race to Perry Roubaix is not, you know, I didn't come up with that idea. That's been done all over, well, all over Europe, all over North America, it's been mm -hmm. done everywhere. Um, <clears throat> I thought ours was a little bit unique because ours actually started in Paris. But the whole idea all along was more of a road race for mountain bikers or a mountain bike race for road racers. It wasn't uh, never meant to be purely a mountain bike race because it obviously isn't. Well, the original course was basically meant to zigzag between the roughest stuff we could find, zigzag onto the next piece of the roughest stuff we could find. Fortunately, the two big pieces for the race were the uh, Grand River Rail Trail, uh, the Jerseyville Rail Trail. So they were the first two sort of chunks that kept the uh, kept the race off pavement for a good long time. The interesting stuff that you ride through is basically private property. Farmers that have asked for permission to use uh, their land. In some cases, it's old railway lines that have been re reverted to the farm, the farmer's property. And in some cases, they're unopened road allowances, which anybody could ride through at any time of the year. The landowners, was that a very challenging thing? Well, yeah, it was. It probably took us a couple of years, actually, to get the, to find out who owned all the bits of land that we wanted to use. We tracked them down through town hall records and wrote to them and asked them. And basically, enough of them said yes, that we could put together a route. We've had one guy in for all um, all 20 editions. Three guys that have been have, have given us permission for every year, and a whole bunch that have been in 14, 15 years. We've got three brand new ones coming in this year. I'm really interested in that first year. How many people did you actually have participating? 266 was the year, first year's starter. And can you compare that with uh, 2012? We're well, around 2,000 now. It grew by. 150 or so the first year, uh, you know, between year one and two. Um, it was pretty soon we had a whole bunch of years where we were growing by 100 a year. We've been around 2,000 now for the last three years. And the actual communities um, of Paris and Ancaster, did you have a hard time persuading them that it was a good idea? In the early years, the communities have always been very easy to deal with. To be a mayor who took a few years to come on side, he did turn into a fan eventually. Traffic jams created by the race. Yeah, I, I know some of the, the highway crossings tend to be a challenge. You've got good support from the police for that, though, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the police have been involved every year since year one. And as they identify problems, but the, and the police get better at handling it because they know exactly what they're doing. At what point did you decide that uh, you needed to break the start of the race up into waves? Uh, we're running out of space. And we thought that there was an advantage to not having traffic jams that pinch points or minimizing them as much as possible. So it wasn't until we had over uh, almost a thousand riders, I think, that we started doing it in waves. And uh, since that time, the biggest wave has been 500. And this year, we're changing that, so the biggest wave is 300. So it should smooth things out in, a little bit in the uh, in the earlier uh, parts of the race. Now, it also gives the police a chance to clear a lot of traffic out. Sure. The overall, the, the dial of riding isn't going to change at all. It's just gotten the race has gotten a little longer, and there's a couple of reasons for it. One is we got offered some really interesting farm lanes to uh, to add to the race. In order to use them, we got to get to them, and uh, so we're uh, we're using a couple of them for the first time this year uh, for our 20th anniversary. But the other reason is that we always changing the course a little bit. It's never been the same. We tried to introduce new new sections. Uh, and sometimes sections that have been in the course for a few years get retired as the uh, as the property gets sold or offered to let us use their land. We couldn't use it because it was flooded. A little bit of water would have uh, gone on it. So, so the, race, the race course changes every year anyway. And uh, the opportunity to include these three new landowners and fourth and fifth as well that might uh, might be included so it could be could be very interesting a lot of the new additions are in the second half yes more of the new additions are in the second half so it makes the 40 kilometer 
an interesting choice now. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are sections that are new that are only in the first half as well. Okay. Do you have a favorite section? Yeah, I think I would say that my favorite section is the uh, section of abandoned rail line just after Harrisburg. Another new feature that you've got for the 20th edition is the uh, Olympic and VIP uh, start. Do you want to describe that a little bit? We decided we want to get involved in the fundraising for the, uh, the Pan Am Velodrome. We're trying to think of what we could think of a way that we could raise some money. And we came up with actually two. And one is when you enter Paris Ancaster, you can make an optional donation to the Velodrome. Basically, because the Velodrome is really important for a strong national team program and provincial team program and winter training recreational riding would be, would be an awesome facility for the cycling community. Um, so we're raising donations, and we've offered to match them. That's going, going really very, very well. And the VIP thing is uh, we basically tapped into the uh, local Olympians from the cycling community, starting with Gord Singleton, Kurt Harnett, Steve Bauer, all living locally have agreed to come out and uh, ride and support this VIP category. Only 200 spots available, but you get the uh, treatment of riding with, with these guys, but you also get to start near the front, so you've got the uh, least traffic. But the Olympians are coming on board like crazy. So you've got Sue Palmer, Lee Hobson is going to be part of that group. The first winner of Paris Ancaster from uh, 20 years ago, Chrissy, she was Chrissy Redden then, she, Chrissy Duval, now she's coming uh, to, uh, to ride. She was also an Olympian um, Cross country mountain biker in Sydney, I believe, and some of the guys uh, from around Ontario that are that have been around for a lot longer in terms of the, the Olympics. Guys like uh, Brian Tudor, who was at the '72 and '76 games, Eon Dornelis, those guys are going to ride uh, as well. But the real the real key is that we've also got Tara Whitten from the uh, Team Pursuit team to come in from Edmonton. She actually owns a cyclocross club, and we've got Jonathan Page, the U.S. cyclocross champion. Too. And Mike Garrigan and Aaron Schooler and on the men's side and the women's side. Got Sue Palmer and Lee Hobson on the podium every year. Mm. Now that we're close to having a velodrome, have you had any thoughts about changing the route to actually end up in a velodrome just like Paris Roubaix? Funny you should ask, but with the original race 20 years ago, the finish line wasn't where it is now. It was over at the uh, Ancaster High School. And the plan 20 years ago was to finish on the running track, a la Paris Roubaix. Mm -hmm. But the principal said yes, but then the athletic department said no, and the finish line was out in front of the school instead. Year two, we moved the finish line back to the top of Martin's Road. So, yeah, we'd love to finish it on a track, just like Perry Roubaix. Entries are filling up, actually. We never sell out quickly, but we're where we normally are at the end of March. 